Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the second afternoon session of the Quantum Eastern Europe workshop. It is my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Professor Andris Ambainis from the University of Latvia, who is one of the true stars uh, in theoretical computer science. I have gathered from Wikipedia and other homepages all his position and all the prizes he got, but instead of listing it and reading it, let me introduce him by reading a small piece that Scott Aronson wrote about how he, he Scott, chose where to do his PhD. So the quote goes like this. Someone wrote to me to tell me that a researcher in Vazirani's group at Berkeley, Andris Ambainis, had solved the important and or problem by inventing a completely new method. I got an early draft of the paper of Andris, and I was blown away. I thought, I must go to Berkeley for graduate school. I must learn whatever Andres and the others there know. So with this, <laughs> I uh, give the word to you, Andres. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thanks. So my today's topic will, the talk will be about quantum speedups for search. And quantum search is something that we have known for a long time. In its traditional form, Quantum search is Grover's algorithm. So that is, there is some number of objects and the task is to find an object with a certain property. And in 1996, Love Grover showed that this can be done with a quadratic speed up. So we can search among n objects in square root of n quantum steps. And this speeds up any naive exhaustive search algorithm. So you can take the naive exhaustive search algorithm for your favorite problem and plug in Grover and get a quadratic speed up. Now, one of the issues with using this in practice is that often naive search is not the best algorithm classically. So Grover gives you the quadra a quadratic speed up, but this might not be a quadratic speed up with respect to the best classical algorithm. And in fact, in some situations, there are classical smart search algorithms that have more than quadratic advantage over a naive search. So in that case, using Grover together with a naive classical search gives you no quantum speed up whatsoever. And my today's talk is how one could recover quantum speed up in those situations by combining Grover search with clever algorithmic ideas from classical computing. And my talk consists of three sub-stories. The first sub-story is about quantum speed ups for NP-complete problems and then namely salesman problem, we have a number of cities and the task is to find the shortest route that visits all the cities. And if we count the number of possible candidate routes, there is n factorial of them, n times n minus one times n minus three and so on, because there are n choices for the first city in the route, n minus one choices for the second city, n minus two choices for the third city and so on. So a naive classical search would mean examining n factorial candidate roots. That's a very big number, and that becomes impractical even for 15 cities. And if we plug in Grover's search, we can go from n factorial quant candidate roots to square root of n factorial. And this is all good. But there's actually a classical search algorithm that solves the problem with two to the n time steps. And even for relatively small n, two to the n is better than square root of n factorial. So naive use of quantum search doesn't give very much here. And here is how the best classical algorithm works. It's actually an old algorithm. Uh, it dates back to 1962. 
And it's one of those algorithms for which there has not been any improvement. Here is that we find the shortest routes through every subset of cities. We start by finding the shortest routes through every set of two cities. That's trivial. Then we use those to build up shortest routes through sets of three cities. That's slightly more difficult. Then we use shortest routes through sets of three cities to build up shortest routes through four cities and so on. So we basically solve simpler sub problems and then we build up solutions to more and more complex sub, sub problems until we have solved the, pro the whole problem, until we have the shortest routes through all cities. And the time is roughly two to the n because there are two to the n possible subsets of cities. And in this process, we end up building the shortest through, routes through each of them. Unfortunately, there is no known shortcut that would somehow avoid examining a significant number of subsets in, of cities. And now here is how we achieve a quantum improvement. Our quantum algorithm consists of two parts. One part is classical. The classical part is that we find the shortest routes through subsets of cities that are relatively small, but contain at most alpha fraction of all cities. And alpha is about the optimal alpha is about 24% of all cities. So if a set of cities contains at most 24% of all the cities, then we classically find the shortest routes through it. And again, we do it by first finding shortest routes through smaller sets of cities, and then by building up shortest routes through larger and larger numbers of cities, but we stop this classical part at the point where we have found the routes through all sets that contain 24% of all cities. And since we stop at this point, we don't need two to the n steps, we need 1.73 to the n steps, because that's the number of subsets of cities that contain at most 24% of all cities. And then our goal is to build up the shortest routes through all cities out of those. And the way how we can do, can do that is that we can divide the shortest route into two halves. We can divide each half into a qu two quarters. And then we can divide each quarter in two parts, one containing 24% of all cities and another containing 1%. So the optimal routes through all cities can be divided into eight subroutes for which we already know the best way to go through those cities. And now what we do is we examine all ways how to decompose the whole root into eight parts like this. And there is some number of possible splits, how we can split the whole root into subroots. There is some time that it needs to that one needs to examine all the possibilities. And then if we use quantum search there, we can save a square root. And that brings us to an algorithm that runs in time 1.73 to power n. And it is still an exponential time algorithm, but it's a faster exponential time algorithm than one what one can achieve classically. And in the classical complexities, there is a long line of research like this that aims at finding better exponential time algorithms for problems 
but one cannot solve in polynomial time. And here we have quantum counterpart for this. We have traveling salesman problem for which we don't know how to solve it efficiently, neither classically nor quantumly. Classically, solving it in all cases takes time 2 to the n. Quantumly takes time 1.73 to the n. Or maybe even less. And same ideas can be applied to other problems that require time 2 to the n classically. There is is an abstract framework into which one can cast the algorithmic ideas that we have been using uh, for quantum algorithm for traveling salesman problem. And then we get a, an improved exponential time algorithm for any problem that can be cast into this framework. So this framework, in terms of Classical theory of computations, this framework is dynamic programming on subsets of n element sets. So whatever can be cast as a dynamic programming on two to the n subsets of, of an n element set can be solved quantumly in time 1.817 to power n. And after this work, these ideas have been further developed uh, by other researchers who have shown that they can be used to get a, get slightly better exponential time algorithms for other problems which one doesn't know how to solve efficiently, neither classically or quantumly. So one, pro, one example is the graph coloring for which the algorithm was found by two Japanese researchers following our work. Another example is the tree with problem, uh, which we solved in our group. And the common feature of both of those problems is that they are in P complete. They seem to need time two to the n classically. Nobody has found algorithm that would be faster than time two to the n classically. And quantumly, we can achieve some quantum advantage by combining quantum search with clever algorithmic ideas from classical computing. So now let me turn on to second part of this work, which is about quantum algorithms for geometric problems. So there are several, so here are two geometric problems. In one problem, we are given a number of points in a plane. And the question, question is, to determine whether there are three points that lie on the same line. And second example is the segment visibility problem in which we have two segments and we have a sequence of obstacles which are also segments. And we want to know whether there, are, there is a point on the first segment from which we can see a point on the second segment so that the view is not abstracted by any of these obstacle segments. The common feature for those, both of those problems is that they can be solved classically in quadratic time, quadratic in the number of points or number of segments. So quadratic time is fine as long as the number of points or segments doesn't get too large. If if we have a thousand points, n squared is one million. That's manageable. If we have a million points, n squared is one trillion time steps, which might be less manageable. And classically, these two problems are part of a larger set of geometric problems, where contains at least 10 different problems. And the common feature for all of those problems is that it's relatively easy to solve them in time n squared, but all the attempts to find a faster algorithm have failed. And at some point, classical computer scientists started noticing that at the core of those all those geometric problems that we would like to solve faster 
is a simple arithmetic problem for which we don't know how to solve it faster. And this simple arithmetic problem is the three sum problem in which we are given n numbers and the task is to determine whether there are three numbers with the property that adding the first and the second number gives the third number. And this is a problem that can be easily solved in time n squared. We calculate there are n squared sums x plus y. So we can calculate all of them, sort them, and then compare them to the original numbers and see if, if there is any sum that is equal to one of the original numbers. And this is a very simple problem, but we don't know how to solve it in time n squared. And there is a conjecture that there is actually no algorithm for this problem that runs in time that is less than n squared. And both of the geometric problems that I mentioned, three points on a line and segment visibility are at least as hard as this problem. So if there is no faster algorithm for this problem, then there is no faster algorithm for those problems as well. And this is an example of a classical field called fine-grained complexity that uh, tries to find precise lower bounds for complexity of various problems. So goal in fine-grained complexity is to take a problem that seems to require time n squared or n cubed and prove that under some simple assumptions, such as this three-sum conjecture, there is no faster algorithm. Now, what happens quantumly? Okay. I Andres, I, uh, I think you are not... Excuse me, it seems that my power... Y yes, uh, just start again the... Perfect. And uh, put it on full screen, I think. Yes. Perfect. Thanks. Is there any issue still? Uh, okay, I hope not. Okay. okay, so this is a point at which I stopped. Yes, exactly. Uh, we had this three uh, some hardness. Yes, so the yes, yeah, so so we have these geometric problems that I mentioned, determining whether three points are on a line and determining whether one segment is visible for, from another segment. And they are at least as hard as this three-sum problem. So they, they require at least quadratic time classically. So what happens quantumly? Well, quantumly, three-sum problem becomes easier. What we can do is we can sort number C and then we can search for a pair of numbers that adds up to one of those numbers that we have given, been given. So we use time of order n log n to sort n numbers. And then we have to search among square root of n squared numbers 
uh, search among n squared pairs of numbers for a pair that sums up to a to some number z in this sorted array and there are n squared pairs of numbers among which to search and with quantum search we can do it in times square root of n squared order n so the point here is that quantumly we get a nearly quadratic speed up for the three sum problem and the question then is can we solve solve all of these geometric problems that are at least as hard as three sum quantumly in a linear number of steps and the answer is not obvious because those problems are at least as hard as three sum but they seem to be actually harder so being able to solve three sum does not immediately apply ability to solve all of those geometric problems. One can use naive quantum search that's, that gives some quantum advantage, but that doesn't go all the way that we could go. So, for example, if we consider the problem of determining whether there are three points on the same line, if there are n points, there are n cubed ways how to choose a set of three points. And then to test all, all of those n cubed possibilities by quantum search, we need time that is n to power 1.5. And the quantum three sum algorithm seems to indicate that we might be able to go to linear time quantumly. And naive quantum search doesn't quite achieve that. Now I will sketch a more sophisticated algorithm. So this more sophisticated algorithm is based on looking at the dual pro problem. So for, a, for the problem of finding three points on the line, the dual problem is to find three lines that pass through the same point. So we have some number of lines in a plane. And the question is, are there three lines that pass through the same point? And these two problems, they are actually equivalent. There is a transformation that turns points into lines and lines into points that transforms one of them into another and second problem into the first. So if we solve the dual problem, we are also solving the original. And the idea of solving the dual problem is that we choose some subset of lines, we use them to divide the plane into regions, and then we use quantum search to search for a region that contains three lines that intersect in, the, in one point. And the key idea here is that for every one of those regions, likely only a small number of lines will pass through this region. So if we restrict ourselves to lines that pass through this re through one region, we can find that whether there are three lines that intersect in one point much quicker. So what we do is I think it might be a problem. Search for a region for A. We can find three lines that intersect in one point in time that is almost linear. Of one. Andres. And in the same problems, one problem is the terminal cover. And then we have some set of smaller triangles. So the question is do those smaller triangles together cover the whole 
base triangle. We can also solve the segment with the base. Andres, I think your net you is uh, problem. breaking up a bit. And we... uh, do you hear me? Um, yes. I think your uh, net is breaking up a bit. Uh, we had some issues with this, uh, but but it was still okay. Uh, we are a little bit running out of time. How long do you think your uh, this uh, third uh, part will take? Uh, oh, we don't hear uh, you. I, I can very quickly sketch it okay. in two or three minutes without going in detail. Yes, two or three minutes could be good. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is a part of a pro. The third direction is about quantum algorithms for problems of high energy physics. This is a part of project in which we have been collaborating with. Uh, Institute of Telecommunications in Lisbon and National Institute for Nuclear Physics in Italy to investigate how quantum computing can be useful for computational challenges of CERN. And one problem at which we have been looking is the problem of particle tracking, which is reconstructing particle tracks in the Large Hadron Collider. And the input data here are points where detectors observe a particle. And the task is to connect those points into lines that correspond to tracks of particle, particles. Hello. It is a set of points. And then the task is to align those sets of points into lines. And this problem in a, is in its flavor similar to three points on a line problem. We start with point. The task is to uh, gather those points in lines. What distinguishes this problem is that detector misfires. So there might be points that don't belong to any line, but in its, in its essence, we are having an issue with your net, I think. Described in the previous direction. Okay, so now let me let me stop here. Yes, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, we are having a issue here, um, still uh, like a network issues. Still, I hope you will hear us. So there is one question uh, from Laurent Farkas from the Nokia Bell Labs, and he asked the following question: a Better than uh, Ordo two to the n algorithm for TSP has not been found so far, or. Uh, or was it proven that it doesn't exist? In the first case, assuming someone invents a classical algorithm of, say, uh, ordo 1.5 to the n, will it be easy to find a quantum algorithm with better exponent? Uh, well, it's not proven that there is no faster quantum algorithm. Yes. And if one finds an algorithm that runs in time 1.5 to the n, well, it will depend on the algorithm. There is a fair number of those algorithms that run in time two to the n, classically, and some of them seem to be able. So it's a it's a result about specific class of algorithms. It's not a result about. Yes, unfortunately, we don't hear you well. Uh, are you here with us still? Andres, do you hear us? Uh, yes, I hear. I... Yes, okay. We, I think we had some network connection. Yes. 
okay so thanks a lot uh, and then uh, uh, we, uh, thank you very much for your uh, great talk and uh, now we go to the uh, next uh, session with the next speaker uh, Marika Kiferova thank you bye bye thank you